Hello and welcome to Pure Experiences. This is a series of videos in which I'm going to answer some questions that are commonly asked after seekers complete the diagnosis program or they listen to the recording of the diagnosis program because it is so fast, it is so quick, it is very natural that any intelligent seeker will face many questions and since those who simply listen to the recording they don't have any teacher before them they are unable to ask their questions or after diagnosis which happens face to face or on a voice call most of the time if they get a question and the teacher is not available they are not able to get the answers so i am doing my humble attempt to answer some questions this q and a is also available in hindi already in my hindi channel bodhi varta and this question and answer series will be useful for those who are doing the essence of knowledge program although i am available there to answer all the questions of the participants of the program but uh, it will save a lot of time if you go through this series it will answer many of your questions that are frequently asked and it will also give you an idea about how to answer any question that is concerned with self knowledge or illusion or oneness simply observe how i answer the questions simply note the logic i use or the metaphors that i use that will train your intellect to think in this specific way and to answer any question remember knowledge is simply reduction it is simply dropping of the false beliefs and this series will be a good demonstration of that so let us proceed and start with some commonly asked questions on self knowledge the first question is how will we get the proof that i am not the body and i will exist even without a body this is a very natural question that if i am not the body and there is no body no physical body how will i know that i exist and i exist as a witness so the first thing to note is that i already exist without the body the experiencer has no body has no shape no form formless cannot be seen is not a object of perception and i am the experiencer and it is existing without a body already and the proof can be obtained in a similar way using the progressive elimination or negation see what changes see what is not essence and you will find yourself body keeps changing and that gives us a firm knowledge that i am not dependent on the body but obviously the question is not asking exactly that the question is asking what is the proof that i exist without a body how will i know that and you heard the good news that it is possible to know that i don't depend on the body right now it is possible to know i am not the body but there is a bad news that if there is no body in general if there is no body mind then there is no when to know who i am although the experiencer will be there as the ultimate ground of reality as the essence of the existence itself but there won't be any living being living creature to know this in other words there won't be anybody to get the proof even if somehow by magic we can bring a proof and moreover there will be nobody to ask for a proof so it becomes an imaginary question here there are many such questions where people imagine a situation and they demand a proof in that situation but uh, the answer to imaginary questions are usually imaginary or we simply show that the question is meaningless if there is a body mind if there is a creature and if it has enough intelligence and curiosity then the question of knowing who am i arises and then any intelligent creature will ask for proof or evidence but this event will not happen if there is no body no creature this is very amazing even though this creature 
This body mind is an illusion. The illusion has curiosity. The illusion has little bit of intelligence. It has a little bit of knowledge. Although it is negative, it is only clearing of the beliefs, but still this capacity is there to know its own essence. And if there is nothing like this, then this situation will, will never arise. The question has an assumption that uh, it is a possibility that the creature will exist without a body. It is not possible actually. Body mind means creature, the individual or the human being. They are creatures. They are nothing but body minds. So probably the person who is asking this question, give me the proof when I don't have a body that I am the experiencer. There is still little bit of identification with the body mind. The person is thinking, I am the body mind. If this is removed, who will be there? Give me the proof that there will be something. So you can see a little bit of confusion here. Self-knowledge means we have already removed the body mind. It's already gone. You are not that. Are you still there? Yes. As the witness of the body mind. Is the knowledge of the body mind there? Yes. Where? In the body mind itself. In the mind you can say specifically. In the memory of this creature. Where is the knowledge of the witness or the experiencer? Same. It is in the body mind, in the intellect, in the memory of this creature. When you remove that memory, if you remove that body mind, if you remove that structure, the knowledge of the experiencer goes away, but not the experiencer. You can reverse this question and say that, can you give me a proof that without the body mind, the experiencer disappears? And the situation is again similar that there will not be anybody to provide the proof, provide the evidence or even know what has happened to the experiencer because there is no agency or no structure to hold any knowledge, to do anything or to ask any question or to know any answer. So both points of views are completely imaginary. These instruments of body, mind, senses, intellect, memory, they are necessary for knowledge. Any kind of knowledge, including the self-knowledge, self-realization. But obviously, these instruments are not necessary for the experiencer to exist. The experiencer is, in, is not a product of these instruments. These instruments are instruments of knowledge. They are not producing the experiencer. They are producing the knowledge. You can say in simple words. That the body-mind is necessary for knowledge, not for that of which knowledge is happening. What is that of which the knowledge is happening? That is the self, that is you, that is your essence, that is the witness, that is the experiencer and that is nothing but the existence. This much knowledge is happening. It is possible only because there is instrument of body-mind. So you can see the importance of this instrument especially a well-refined, purified and uh, highly intelligent instrument with the capability of self-reflection, logic and direct perception. A sentient being is necessary for knowledge. And then what acts is the truth will be known. Otherwise, there is nobody to find the truth. There is nobody to get the evidence. There is nobody to understand it. Not only the body or the mind, the senses are needed. And a particular kind of self-organized intelligence is needed and obviously a master or a guru, teacher is needed. Some qualities are needed such as curiosity, logic, skepticism, critical thinking. If you remove even one of these requirements, the knowledge will not happen. The proof will not be taken. The evidence goes nowhere. Nobody understands it. That capability is gone. Even though the experiencer is there, the whole existence is there. But uh, the matter of proof and evidence is now meaningless. Because it cannot be had. You cannot have it. You will not understand it. We can go back to the screen and the picture metaphor. The picture depends on the screen. The screen is the witness. Let us assume in this metaphor, the screen is not a passive screen. It is the witness of the picture. If you can imagine a three-dimensional screen, like a holographic screen, which can witness whatever appears in it, that will be very exact metaphor. 
or even your phone screen or monitor screen is good cinema screen good just assume that the screen can perceive the pictures so we need a screen for a picture there cannot be a picture without the screen but there can be a screen without the picture there is no doubt about it this question is asking what will be the proof that the screen exists when the picture is gone the question is asking what is the proof that i exist even without the body and the body here is like a picture on the body mind and this picture is asking give me some proof that uh, the screen is always there even when i disappear from the screen now if the screen is sentient intelligent you will see that the screen is laughing the screen is the experiencer here but fortunately the real experiencer has no qualities it does not matter for the experiencer if somebody is asking for its proof or not it is simply witness it is witnessing this drama this this creature is asking really strange question but you can imagine a screen with a little bit of sense of humor now the funny thing is this picture has a little bit of intelligence and memory to hold this knowledge that essentially i am the screen not the picture not this colors and shapes that appear on the screen i am not that my nature is screen on which anything can appear and the nature of this picture is impermanent illusion it is changing so it can see that the picture is changing and the screen is not and that is enough evidence for any intelligent person or intelligent picture here that is enough evidence that is sufficient and necessary evidence but somehow the picture imagines suppose i disappear completely can somebody give me proof that i'll know that there is still screen there but uh, the picture forgets that its knowledge will disappear its senses will disappear it will not be present to get the proof there will be nothing there this instrument disappears and the knowledge disappears completely with it so there is a belief behind this question that knowledge is possible without the body mind or intelligence or any of these qualities if you can think about it is it possible now we can uh, discuss the metaphysical or non physical aspect of this question probably the seeker here is asking that my physical body will disappear that is guaranteed but i heard that i'll reappear as a non physical body as you know this kind of belief is very much widespread that after the death there is after death or after life experience and then i reappear although without this physical body but some other form will be there so the student has heard this thing obviously never seen it and so they can get this kind of question he or she is saying that uh, after death probably i am in another form and can you give me any evidence that i am not that form or i'll exist without this physical body but as something else so for a minute we can assume that there is really such a body which is not physical which is non physical however you can apply the same method can i experience it and obviously if it is there you can experience it and if you experience it it is not you it is a form that which is experiencing this non physical form is you is your essence is the screen and that form will be changing that form will be made up of something non physical matter anything at all and then it will be illusory it won't be you obviously that form can have a little bit of intelligence perception will be capable of knowledge and it will get the same knowledge that i am not this form so even if the physical body is gone and you get some other body the conclusion will be the same that you know this new body mind is also not me it is also an illusion those who know the physical body mind and the non physical they can see that the physical is also illusory form it does not last it changes it is also a mental experience there is nothing physical about the physical form so even if you get an eternal body which remains forever immortal the conclusion is same i am not this body if the body disappears completely without any trace even without any memory i am still not the body i am still the experiencer i am the screen however unfortunately there is nobody to know this thing
Incidentally, this answers the question, who gets the self-knowledge? And uh, the answer is very paradoxical that the self does not get the self-knowledge. That which is not the self, the body-mind instrument, gets the self-knowledge. That can be disappointing for the body-mind that I am not the reality. And then it is natural for the person or the individual to construct another belief system where this ego, this person, this structure, body-mind continues in another form because it has a lot of resistance because of survival instinct, the need to survive. As soon as it comes to know that this body-mind is not real, it is not me, the, the real thing is something which cannot be seen, cannot be felt and is universal, nothing individual, it is not mine. It gets a shock of its life and then proceeds to construct some imaginary scenarios where it will survive. Given that uh, there can be memory in any form, non-physical form, but that is still not the individual, that is something else. It is a complete illusion and obviously no evidence or proof of such an event happening can be given right now. If that happens, it happens. That will also change, that will also go away. And if the knowledge happens, the knowledge is always the same. If the knowledge changed, it is not knowledge, it is not truth. So realize the importance of this body-mind. This is the only use of this creature to know itself. Next question is, everything can be removed but not the brain. So am I the activity of the brain? So when we progressively remove anything that can be considered as me or my essence. A majority of students, they get stuck on the brain. Because how can we remove it? I can remove my hair, I can remove my nails, I can even remove my fingers, one or two fingers, or, or one kidney, one uh, lung, but not the brain. Because I won't be there if I remove it. And therefore, there is this belief that uh, experiencer is a product of the brain because it was, it was never seen without the brain and obviously it is never known without the brain. You can see this is a derivative question of the body-mind question, the first question. Here the student has no problem with the body-mind but uh, here the evidence is asked when there is no brain. Give me the evidence that I exist, the experiencer exists without the brain and more specifically the activity of the brain. Because uh, a dead brain without any activity, electrical activity, is uh, there is no chance of anything being there. No experience or no knowledge. So, very, very legitimate question. Can you experience the brain? Yes, it is possible, although we don't recommend it because it involves cutting your skull and so on. It is possible by x-rays or CT scan or something like this. You can also see the activity of the brain. And that gives us a hint that it is not me because it can be seen. And some people say that why can't the brain see itself? It is what is happening. The brain is watching itself. So I am the brain. And when the death happens, there is no brain, brain activity. There is no me. And obviously brain is also dead. So what matters is not the brain, but the activity. And this is an important point. To remember that the organ itself is uh, simply a supporter of the activity. If the same activity happens somewhere else, the experiencer will appear there. What is the activity? Electrical pulses of some kind. There is some chemical activity there. There is some quantum mechanical activity there. Who knows? We don't know. Or there can be some magical activity there. We don't know. But if same can be reproduced somewhere else, the experiencer will appear there. That is the assumption. So the brain itself is not you. One another thing to note is the same kind of activity happens in whole of the body. The whole nervous system spreads throughout the body and it has the same neurons, same uh, electrical activity, something similar. So then the theory can be refined that no, we need a specific kind of activity and a specific kind of structure not any neural structure which is in your hands or in your legs or anywhere else. So those who know neuroscience, they know that uh, there is no specific or 
special structure in the brain that can be said to be the seat of consciousness as they say in old time they used to call it the seat of soul and now we can say the seat of the experience where the experience resides actually i started my search for my true nature from the brain because that is the most common theory if you start searching you will first hear this answer you are in the brain you are the brain so any intelligent person will ask where in the brain so then i saw and i read the books and i heard great scientists that even if you remove half of the brain you are still there and there is no particular structure in the brain which has anything specific going on anything special going on no we can identify some areas which uh, participate in the sense process or the motor process sensory motor areas like the old brain or the temporal areas or there are some areas that are helpful in thinking or emotions but there is nothing which produces the experience we can say they mediate the experience and any good book on neuroscience has this word everywhere on all the pages that this and this kind of brain structure mediates this and that kind of experience mediate means it is a medium so mostly the microstructures of the brain are uniform they are arranged uniformly there is nothing specific probably the latest uh, theory is that the neocortex is the seat of consciousness it is probably the newest structure in the brain in the timeline of evolution but uh, when you, when we you study it under the microscope it is all the same there is no specific structure there there is no specific pattern that corresponds to uh, experiencer or uh, consciousness or anything nothing so we don't get any evidence uh, that's what i can say safely probably in future you will get some evidence exactly this thing is needed for the experiencer to be there but we already know this is kind of impossible there are atoms there there is matter there are molecules there is nothing magical in the brain yes it is needed for experience there is no doubt about it if you remove whole of your brain there won't be any experience because as i said the whole instrument is needed and brain is a part of this instrument very very important part and it processes the sensory data without that processing the intelligence will not arise no knowledge will happen it also has memory or you can say it mediates memory because there is very less evidence that the brain stores memory you can say it mediates memory i can be wrong so one thing we can confidently say that if you, if you remove the brain there won't be any knowledge of the experiencer or of the, any experience or of existence same thing can be said if you remove the body because the brain will not exist without the body for long if you replace the body yes the brain will exist and the knowledge will be there can we replace the brain that is debatable How, however you can do a thought experiment you can remove parts of it one by one instead of removing everything at once because if you remove the whole brain and the person or the instrument is not there to get the evidence just like in the first case in order for there to be any knowledge you need the instrument brain is a very important part of it but it is again like a picture appearing on the screen and this picture is a little bit uh, complex and special because it formats the experience it converts whatever is around it into a format which enables survival of this organism and it enables sensory perception it enables intelligence although any structure like this will enable it and the same knowledge will be obtained same evidence will be taken the proof of it is that there are many such brains and everybody gets the same knowledge so one specific kind of brain is not required so you can remove half of it just like i said just like you can remove one kidney one lung probably a lot of the body parts are duplicated they are mirrored in a vertical symmetry so brain is also mirrored you can remove half of it and the person also stays and obviously the experiencer stays with some effects obviously you can remove some part of it 
replace it by other parts and uh, it regenerates the functionality it continues and yes the matter of the brain can be recycled new neurons can be added the old can be removed if the brain is only matter nothing metaphysical non physical about it then it is replaceable therefore not essential now the important thing is no 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 the matter is not really essential activity then the obvious question is which activity brain is doing a millions of things and uh, it is impossible to point out that this activity creates experience sir it is impossible to isolate that activity since there is only one experience sir or you cannot even count it and there are hundreds or thousands of activities logic says that cannot be these activities secondly the activities the continue the activities continuously change always changing it is never a specific activity even for a millisecond so the experience is always there unchanging how can changing activity produce unchanging essence which is formless shapeless qualityless etc etc it is never seen what is seen what is the direct experience here that the brain activity produces more activity any activity if it starts it results in simply more activity of a different kind nothing results in experiencer moreover nothing results in perception of qualities like the colors or smells or taste or emotions or imaginary things in the mind imaginations nothing at all is seen as producing these things and sometimes we say there is no causal link between the activity of the brain and the subjective perception or even the experiencer or consciousness there is no causal link however there is a correlation and that is why people misunderstand there is a law in the logic which is very clear well known firmly established that correlation is not causation but probably uh, ordinary people don't know the, all these things they are told that you are the brain and brain produces everything that you see feel and your essence is also that and people blindly believe it although i have never seen any great scientist say this even the great neuroscientists they will not say this they will always use some very very carefully selected words like it is a theory or this is the hypothesis this is the currently accepted hypothesis but when it comes down to the ordinary seeker or ordinary person it becomes really corrupt watered down ignorant version that you are the brain now any half intelligent person will ask the proof that remove the brain and show me i am there uh, so again we can say no <laughs> it cannot be shown because there is nobody there to see the witness or the experiencer cannot be seen anyway it can be known by being that which you are so the brain does not come in picture when you try to get the evidence the evidence is very direct we say it is self evident or self shining self illumined nothing is needed to know i am but because there are layers and layers and layers of ignorance we need to remove it and the brain is a great impurity you can say in knowing yourself not the brain the belief the blind belief that brain is somehow involved in these things there is another really interesting observation that many creatures do not have a brain and people will start laughing but they never pay attention to their surroundings for example plants trees they don't have anything that is similar to a brain or nervous system although we can postulate that they have sensory experience which means the experiencer is getting it getting something there is an experience they do not produce electrical signals probably some plants can produce but not all but they do produce chemical signals they have very rudimentary senses like uh, they grow towards light and the roots they can sense gravity or water or something like this and they grow towards that some plants can sense injury or disease attack of insects so on they have a signaling system and the plants uh, if you see like this are very complicated organisms how do they survive without a brain 
how do they sense everything so that's why we never say it in public that they are conscious but a spiritual person has no problems accepting this it is as clear as a day that yes they are also sentient creatures like you and me although they are less evolved similarly a huge number of organisms on earth they do not have brain or nervous system they are called microorganisms bacteria viruses or single celled animals creatures many worms and um, other things they do not have that kind of brain that we have still they can sense they are sentient we can say there is an experience there and that uh, shows the presence of experiencer we cannot say that there is an experience but there is no experiencer that is illogical because then the word experience has no meaning here you can simply say there is simply activity in the worm or bacteria and there is no experience and that's what people say actually and they are mechanical creatures they don't have soul but uh, there is nothing different in a human we can say the same thing for the humans i can see you check you i can check your behavior and i can say oh just a pile of electrical activity mechanical things chemical structure will never know so the experience is subjective always there is nothing which is not subjective and that always implies experiencer so when you remove the brain obviously the person is dead there is nobody to ask for evidence so we don't do that but we can remove the brain part by part and it is seen that the experience changes not the experiencer if you remove some of the brain the person will say i cannot see now i cannot hear you so the experience has changed but that which is getting this abnormal experience now is still there it has not changed if you remove more of it probably the person will not be able to speak now and probably will be able to only communicate that nothing makes any sense what is what i don't know and then again the experience has changed it is completely meaningless jumble but this meaningless experience is still taken by the experiencer there is nothing else to get it remember the experiencer is simply the ability of the existence to experience itself i am using the word ability because there is no other word it is actually the essential part of the existence that is the only thing that never goes away that never changes so by magic if you put back the brain and the person will be restored and the person will say yes i could experience removal of the brain part by part but i think it is not possible the person will die immediately so yes you can remove the knowledge of the experiencer but not the experiencer this is the basic logical uh, mistake there that uh, people assume that uh, not knowing the experiencer means there is no experiencer that is uh, the logical mistake they confuse between the knowledge of the experiencer and the experiencer itself remember the knowledge is dependent on the creature on these structures it comes and goes even without removing the brain or the body it must be your own experience that your knowledge comes and goes that is what we call loss of awareness that is why you have this awareness practice to remember everything all the time so we don't really need to remove the brain or the body or the creature don't really need to destroy it to prove that the knowledge of the self can go away yes it can go away <laughs> is not guaranteed but not the experiencer itself so again going back to the screen metaphor which picture do i need to remove from the screen so that the screen disappears completely which part of the picture is most necessary for the screen to be there and you will see that no there is nothing like this even if the picture is very very complicated like a brain if you remove that picture the screen remains yes it will take a screen to show that picture it is reverse the picture depends on the screen still we cannot say that the screen causes the picture that is not true there is no causal relationship anyway from both sides any kind of experience will not cause the experiencer and experiencer will never cause any kind of experience there is no causal relation the relation is of oneness they are one which was told to you in the program and obviously there will be many questions regarding the oneness also 
similarly we can say that uh, just like uh, the form of the table is not necessary for the wood to be there assume there is a wooden table same way the experiencer is the essence it is not necessary for any form to be present for the essence to be present so the essence does not arise from the form there is no causal process there for the form to create its own essence you know the important thing is to prove what is the essence you need to first find out the essence then you can say like this that the form will not create the essence it must be firmly established what is the essence then you can easily say that the form will not cause the essence how to find out the essence this this very simple process of elimination see what is changing see what can be observed what is whatever is observed is not the observer object is not the subject and that is sufficient evidence that the experiencer is the essence and then you can easily say that no you can bring any kind of form complicated form it will never produce the experiencer it will always exist yes its knowledge may not exist there will not be anything or anyone to know what is my essence remember the knowledge itself is a form it is a arrangement in memory the knowledge can disappear with the memory but not that of which that knowledge was so very common belief that the experience is the cause of the experiencer and you will need a really ripened intellect a person who has researched it nicely thoroughly to understand that this is false it is a proven thing already it is proven since many thousand years this was accepted by all the intelligent wise people in this world i have no idea how this belief is so widespread even the so called educated people think like this and uh, yes their education is the problem so i want to conclude this episode here and we'll continue with more questions in the next part thank you everybody for listening